Well, this video should be a fun one. So as you all know, we just recently got the bonus boss update, which means we now have ultimate tier weapons. And it was pretty difficult at the start, but after learning the mechanics and stuff, it started to get easier. Well, not exactly super easy because you still have to go through the Northern Lands and stuff, but you know what I mean. So that begs the question, is it possible to beat it with no inner just like it is possible to beat Northern Lands with Enchanted Force stuff with no inner, which is actually an upcoming challenge, mind you. And I thought, hmm, maybe it could be possible because with my sets, I can pre pretty much beat it pretty easily, but not to the point where I can carry someone because they just have ridiculously high HP. So. That's the challenge for this video. I will be trying to beat the Odin Reincarnation using no inner and also 184 skill points. Well, 85 because of my Valhalla set, but who cares? So my current set at the moment is a 7.28 Valhalla Warrior Helmet with a 7.04, well, technically 4 because rounding, and purple warrior armor. And a 73.7 legendary. And for my skill points, I'll be using 30 stamina and 155 physical power, which gives me the bare minimum of 800 million HP. So I just I wanted to go 1.6 billion just to be safe, but that would heavily impact my damage because with my flame shurikens, I deal about 900 trillion ish per spell. And this is good enough for the dungeon. I know you need at least 1.6 quadrillion damage to beat the boss solo. And I feel if I go 1.6 billion, I won't deal enough damage to beat the boss solo. So we'll see how it goes. And this video will be the same format as my Enchanted Forest with Aquatic Temple gear, which means I will show my deaths and fails after a warrior or mage run, whatever I do first. And I will show a little thoughts and process on whatever scenario I went through on the boss. So now let's get into our round. So I will not be showcasing me speedrunning the dungeon because that is not really what you're here for. You're here to see the boss. So in, as you see first, I am doing the warrior version first because I'm more used to warrior opposed to mage because my mage set isn't as good as my warrior set and I've been hunting for a better warrior or a better mage helmet and even better warrior armor but I've had no luck uh, ever since I dropped my last helmet. Yeah, I'll come back once I finish my run.
Okay, well, that didn't take as long as I thought it would then, but I was so close to dying at the end there, because I, as soon as it appeared on the left, I was not prepared to go to the right side. And I just happened to have my spell available before the little snake pattern went around, but I kind of lucked out there. And yeah, he healed once, but that I still deal enough damage so he can heal twice at most. And yeah, there were some mistakes here and there, but I think I can work those out. So that said, let's roll right into our mage set. Okay, so what, for my mage set, I am rocking a 1.7 or a 7.1 mage helmet and a 7.1 mage armor with 73 million legendary. And for my skill points, I'll be using the same amount of skill points as my HP is fairly similar to my warrior set. So I don't need any extra skill points on stamina. With this, I deal about 900 trillion to 1Q. And it's basically the same as my warrior, it's just a tiny bit less. So I'll be attempting the same thing. So I'll be the boss with no inner and then show you my thoughts and process. And although I use... Um, although I use Geyser in the lobby, I am actually going to be using Soul Drain for the boss because I feel it's actually easier to use. So, that said, let's get into our run.
So here I like to camp here when I get the red circle. And this is to prevent it from getting in the way whenever the red lines start to appear. So I, if you don't know how this boss works, it will create a little circle that will snake around the whole arena. And at some point after that, he will do like a little spin and attack similar to the mid guardian champion except it only does it once and it's quite slow and it's in a predictable pattern so after he does that blue orb herb attack i like to stand next to the little symbol that you're closest to when you spawn and here's what that looks like Right here is where I like to camp once those lines appear. So something not known with the snake pattern or something I don't see very well known is when it circles around, the next it will come back around that area unless you're on the very edge. And when it does come back, it'll be directly behind. So say if it spawns in front of you and passes by, then next time it comes back, it'll, it'll spawn right behind you. So you can take advantage of this by by keeping an eye on whenever a new sequence starts. So if it starts in one area and then and it circles around, you have to keep note of that. This is a very pay attention type boss, which I think is quite good for dungeon quests because it kind of punishes those who just adapt to um, what everyone else is doing or just rely on solely on healers. I like bosses where you actually have to move around and pay attention to your attacks rather than relying solely on healers because that's literally what everyone does and Northern Lands, after all the nerfs, definitely counteracted it, the pay attention element and studying everything. And I know this is very downplayed by the community as everyone relies solely on healers just for their health, and I don't think that's a very good thing. If you like can't dodge at all, then sure, go ahead with it. But if you actually have the skills and you take the time to actually learn the dungeon, then you shouldn't really need that. So at this point, I zoomed out how to see where the red line was going to start. And on this case, it started on the left side. So I immediately had to go to the right side because it is just barely dodgeable with no inner focus if you, and if you actually have a decent reaction time. Now, I made a claim that, I'm, that I have like a really good reaction time for Dungeon Quest. This isn't actually 100% true because... This case, it's entirely RNG which side the line spawns in, and if you're too slow, then you you might as well just die. Even Guardians will have a tough time, because um, those red lines stay for a really long time, and they deal about 1 billion, so yeah, make sure all you Guardians get to the safe zone, and you guys gotta pay attention too. So while you're moving around when the li red lines are appearing, you gotta avoid the blue circles because those give anti-healing and stunning for 3 seconds. It could be 5, but it's just an approximation. So this will get harder as you stay on the boss longer because as you saw later in my game, um, the red line or the red circle snakes started appearing after the red line started appearing. And that definitely adds a little bit of challenge but it's kind of unintentional believe it or not because i'm pretty sure the the circles that circle around the arena have a constant pattern so you can kind of anticipate that and kind of plan a different route for it so there you go so here i actually got really lucky that it spawned on the green in color so what makes this whole boss very difficult with no inner focus or inner rage is the orb spawning location. The orbs will spawn on a random side. Now, notes it can never spawn directly behind the boss, but it can spawn on like one side to the complete other side. And if that happens, you have to let him heal. And if you're soloing with a purple Valhalla set with a Gungnir, then you must let him not heal more than two times because otherwise you're just going to end up losing time. 
So if he spawned a yellow beam here, I would have been dead. Because I would have still been able to make it to the red one because of how close I am. And you can see, especially on my warrior run, um, there was a case where I had to let him heal. And also, there was a case where I was unable to make it to the safe zone. And also, pop enough orbs that I can still beat it. So I was forced to take a death, and here's what I mean. So this is exactly what I mean. I got unlucky here, and he spawned a yellow beam, and the yellow safe zone was right to me, and there was a green orb still going after him. Um, when he spawned those green orbs, the last one spawned on the complete opposite of the right one, and I can't let him heal more than two times, so I decided I would just tank the red orb, and then pop the green one over there. And once he spawned the yellow beam, I immediately knew I had to let him heal, and then I just went straight to the safe zone. If he spawned a green or a red head beam, then I would have been able to make it to the safe zone, and also explode the green orb. So that's a little bit of bad luck for this boss, but you kind of need that for this specific part. And believe it or not, it, this is the only part where you need good RNG. So something you can really take advantage of this boss is when he splits the arena in half, if the green side is always on one side, you can take that opportunity to take a healing break. Now, this time I actually didn't need it, but if, I, if my health was low, even as warrior, I would switch my weapon and just quickly heal because it's a very long break and you don't really need to do anything. If it spawns on the opposite side at least once, you, pro you will either need to be quick or just wait for the next round to heal. Now, I did heal in this round once, and that was in the middle of a fight, which was risky, but I was constantly looking for my spell, and believe it or not, I am actually able to dodge with a spell screen on my on me at the same time, but it's something that I thought I'd show off. This was honestly just a mistake on my end. I for, I for some reason thought I could have made it past the blue orb, but it spawned like to the left of me and um, I just didn't expect it to come so early. So that's why I died here. I could have completed this with no deaths and as you saw at one point I did heal myself, which I would not really consider cheating, but um, yeah, it definitely took some time away. So when I went up the stairs, I was expecting to go left, but I zoomed out and I saw the red line starting on the left, so I immediately thought I was gonna die, but I would still try to get there. This is something that kind of happens in Dungeon Quest a lot, especially if you're doing like N2Gs and stuff without carrying. And this is something that happens. You just expect something to come from one side, but it ends up on the other, so you just instinctively just go over there and you expect yourself to die. Now, I got very lucky here and I was still alive because the snake pattern was also circling around as you see in the top right. So, I still survived it, which was kind of impressive for me, but I held my spells because I couldn't hit him from that far and in case you don't really know the specific range where you can hit the boss, say the first... The first pattern on the ground, the red pattern that's glowing, you can hit him from the center of that. And that's quite a lot of range, honestly. It's more range from any spell and we have in Dungeon Quest. And yeah, there's that. I think that'll wrap up my thoughts and process. If you guys want to see tips and tricks for this boss, like explaining all of its mechanics and stuff in detail, well, please let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you for watching and I'll see you.